Coming in second time. And that off. And the Easter Festival highlight the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National. Uphill they go to the first of 24 fences. It's We'll Have One and Where's Frankie together. Followed by Frontal Assault jumping up in between horses, the blue cap. All safely over the first. They're followed to the first ditch by the grey intense raffles. Nice and handy is street value. White cap of Deal Kerr with Nick Rocket not far behind the leaders than any second now. Manila Cocooner on the inside with Cool Survivor next as they go away from fence number two. And it is Frontal Assault who picks it up from Street Value. Then where's Frankie? We'll have one. Wide of the leaders is Deal Kerr with Nick Rocket and any second now an intense raffles. Manila Cocooner next and then Cool Survivor and Yeah Man and History of Fashion and Senior Chief where it all began on the inside of Heart to Dark and then Daily Present, already ridden along at the rear is Dunboyne and then Churchstone Warrior, Good Time Johnny held up and Favori de Chandu at the back of the field as they turn right up at the top of the track to fence number four and the leader is Frontal Assault by a couple of lengths. From on the inside taking closer order is Intense Raffles being followed downhill to the next two fences by Wheel Have One. Where's Frankie Street Value come next? With Manila Kakuna in any second now. In the black and orange is Nick Rocket. Downhill they go to fences five and six. A plane to be followed by their second ditch. All standing as they jump the next. And the leader is Frontal Assault. Being followed by intense raffles. We'll have one. Where's Frankie Street Value? Manila Kakuna next to the inside after the top weight. Yeah, man. And he's second now. Nick Rocket has been shuffled back into mid-division, but still a long, long way to go. As they turn to the next fence, it's frontal assault by less than two lengths to intense raffles. Disputing second with where's Frankie Street Value and we'll have one. Those four are in a line. Two and a half to three lengths in front of Manila Kakuna, the Nyam man. And he's second now next with Nick Rocket and Deal Kurt and Heart to Dark and History of Fashion. Light Blue Jacket in mid-division of Senior Chief and then Cool Survivor and Favori de Chandu and Church Don Waddy and Where It All Began and Daily President and Dunboyne and Good Time Johnny. Sticky at that, losing a position or two was Deal Kurt and the White Cap. It's frontal assault by length and a half. As they make the run now to the final Two and a half miles or so. Two more fences to bring them into the straight for the first time. And they're tightly grouped with frontal assault holding sway over where's Frankie, a course favorite. And that intense raffles. Street value next with we'll have one in any second now. Manila Kakuna is next, followed by Deal Kurt and Nick Rocket. The fence on the turn into the straight, which is fence number nine. And it is frontal assault. Second in the race two years ago, over the fence on the turn in from Intense Raffles, who's fast becoming a core specialist, then where's Frankie, the yellow cap? Street value next on the inside, we'll have one. Then Yam yeah, Man and Manila Kakuna in any second now, Nick Rocket and Heart of Dark next with Deal Curtin, History of Fashion and Senior Chief and where it all began and Favori to Sean Doon, Cool Survivor and Dunboy and Churchstone Warriors, two behind. Good time, Johnny and Daily present. Still well boxed up. First of three in the straight, fence 10. And it's Frontal Assault and Carol Miller by a couple of lengths to Intense Raffles and JJ Slevin. Being followed by Where's Frankie and Donna Myler. On this side in the spots is Street Value and Dad O'Keefe. And then we'll have one and Caden Cannon. Up the inside is Stable Companion, Minilla Kakuna and Danny Mullins. As they head for the fence, that will be the final fence next time in the Boyd Sports Irish Grand National. Frontal Assault. Onto this fence, below the stands, over, but has a greatly reduced advantage as Intense Raffles is now within three parts of a length. In third place, is Wheel of One, then where's Frankie? Street Value next, as they head for the halfway stage. And then Yam Man and Manila Kakuna in any second now. History of Fashion and Heart to Dark. Nick Rocket and Senior Chief and where it all began and Favori to Sean Do next with Deal Kurt and Dunboyne and Chester Warrior. What are your good time, Johnny Cool Survivor Daily Present. They're at the completion of a circuit. 12 fences left to jump. Frontal assault by less than a length to intense raffles. In third place is we'll have one from where's Frankie and then Street Value as they pass their point of departure. Going uphill to fence number 13, having gone by halfway, 12 left to jump, and it's frontal assault up and over. From intense raffles, who's now almost in terms, 
And then where's Frankie and Street Value wide of those three? We'll have one next. They're tracked by any second now. And yeah, man, Manila Kakuna, History of Fashion, and Nick Rocket is next. Followed by Deal Curran, Senior Chief, and Heart to Dark on the inside. With Cool Survival and Where It All Began over another ditch. And a mistake there, slow in the air was Deal Kerr. Frontal assault continues to put in a good shift. Intense raffles right alongside. And then where's Frankie Street Value being pulled up as cool survivor? After the leading quartet, we'll have won. History of fashion creeping in a contention. Then yeah, man, in any second now, and Nick Rocket, Manila Kakuna, Senior Chief, and another mistake by Deal Kerr. On the inside, in the white and black jacket, is hard to dark. Then Favori de Chandu and Dunboyne, and where it all began towards rear division. Then Deal Kerr, Churchstone Warrior, Good Time, Johnny and Daly present. Turning at the top of the track, nine fences left to jump. And his frontal assault by a half to intense raffles. Slight mistake by Where's Frankie, gave a place to Wheel Have Won as they make the descent of the final nine furlongs and the two fences coming up down the far side. And it is frontal assault just with the lead from intense raffles. Where's Frankie? And we'll have one next with Yam Man. Racing onto the heels of the leaders, the quartered colors, then street value and history of fashion. Any second on Manila Kakuna and then Nick Rocket. Senior Chief is creeping into contention, the light blue jacket. They're heading for the last ditch. It's frontal assault up and over by three parts of a length, two intense raffles. And then where's Frankie? Yeah, man, up into fourth. That history of fashion, we'll have one any second now. Followed by Senior Chief, and then comes Manila Kakuna. Street value is falling away. Then Arthur Dark and Nick Rocket, where it all began, and Dunboyne and Churchstone Warrior. Next is Favori de Chandu as they come towards the next fence. Less than seven furlongs to go. And it's frontless sword leading Natalie. Intense raffles. Who's been his companion for most of the journey? And then comes Where's Frankie and Yaman is next with history of fashion. And he second now chases the leaders. Then comes Manila Kakuna. Senior Chief, we'll have one heart to dark. Nick Rocket Dunboyne. Churchstone Warrior next. Then where it all began. And Favori de Chandu. Five fences left to jump in the national. And it's frontal assault and an intense raffles there together. Followed by Where's Frankie? Yeah, man on the inside of history of fashion. Heading to the fourth last fence on the home turn. Frontal assault and an intense raffles one and two. Followed by Where's Frankie? Yeah, man next as they jump this fence. Frontal assault, a mistake by intense raffles, but stayed on his feet. On the inside is Yeah, man. Manila Kakuna is closing in the white cap. Then history of fashion, Where's Frankie? Coming on the outside any second now with Nick Rocket, and then we'll have one. Heart to a dark and church stone warrior, where it all began for Vody de Chandu. They straighten for the final three fences. Intense raffles back on terms with frontal assault and history of fashion and mistake by Yaman Man losing Churchstone Warrior. Intense raffles comes to take the long time leader, frontal assault and Manila Kakuna, followed by history of fashion over the second last. Intense raffles, the fractional leader, frontal assaults not lying down. Gone there was Favori de Chandu. Intense raffles is the leader coming to the final fence. Intense raffles, JJ Slevin over. Manila Kakuna rally second now on the outside, followed by frontal assault, less than 100 yards to go. Intense Raffles from any second now on the near side. And Tent Raffles wins the national. A second national for JJ Slevin and Tom Gibney. Any second now has yet to end his national hoodoo. And then Manila Kakuna, frontal assault for a long time later than history of fashion. We'll have one Nick Rocket where it all began. Yaman yeah, Art to Dark. Well, Tom Gibney has done it again. He's being congratulated left, right and centre here after winning his second Ball Sports Irish Grand National in intense raffles. Tom, 12 years ago, it was Lee and the Barney. He was coming in under the radar somewhat. This guy was one of the favourites. How much of a thrill did you get out of seeing him deliver on the big stage? Uh, you know, sure, I'm buzzing. Uh, every bit as much of a thrill for different reasons. Um, you know, like you said, he came in here as second favourite and... You know, we had huge confidence in him, and, and he ran just like we expected he would, and, and that's the very satisfying feeling. Tom, just take us back to how the association with Simon Muneer and Isaac Sway came about. This is the first horse you've had for them. It is, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I spoke to Simon a couple of times last February and uh, um, 14, 15 months ago. And uh, um, yeah, anyway, the long story short, Simon rang me out of the blue about the following September, I think it was, uh, to say he had just kept an eye on what we were doing. He liked what he saw and, and you know, would, would we train one for him? And it was a big shout for him, a big outfit like that. You know, to put a horse with a, a small stable like us, compared to the giant stables you have now and the powerhouses where most of the big owners migrate to. So, you know, fair play to them. That took a bit of doing and it was, it's brilliant to be able to to repay them with the result, you know. You're a great man to target a horse at a race. When did the Irish Grand National come into your mind as the race you wanted to win? Uh, look, at, I don't know, I could pretend now it was all a great plan, but it really just fell into place that way, Gary, to be honest. We were supposed to go to England with him. We actually were in England with him, and uh, myself and Declan, who's like a right-hand man in, in the outfit with me, and like we wake up in the race in Haydock Park, and, and the place is frozen solid and we came back, that was in December, and the travelling actually took a lot out of him, and uh, so I didn't end up running him for at least five weeks, I'd say, after that. Uh, so who knows where he would have ended up or what way it would have went if, it, if just a lot of luck, a lot you of know, luck. It was definitely on your mind though before he won here last time. Incredible to think that you thought you might have had to win that day just to be sure your place in the field today when he would have got in quite comfortably even uh, without winning. Yeah, I know, I know, sure. Look, at Stevie Wonder wouldn't have seen that one coming. But to be fair, um, you know, the upside of that was, the, you know, for a fantastic race that it is, it did cut up for an Irish national and... You know, we, we, we had great confidence and, and for the weather to stay the way it did as well, which was going to be a big plus for us too. Um, I suppose I got a... The only thing I was really worried about close to the time was the weight, with the weights going up so much and, you know, the record of horses carrying a big weight wouldn't be great. So I was thinking, you know, and he's only six and I thought, yeah, is he going to be able to carry the weight at this stage of his life? So. The fact that he could was, was great. Tough luck on Daryl Jacob, of course, who would have been the man on board, but for injury. JJ Slevin, though, had him in a beautiful position. Were you happy at all stages of what you were seeing? Absolutely, yeah. I was absolutely gutted for Daryl when, uh, when that happened. Simon rang me that night, and uh, we really were because uh, Daryl gave him, you know, he was a big part of the horse coming here the way he did and the confidence he has to be able to ride him and give him confidence like that in his two previous runs. Yeah, uh, you know, so it was an awful pity for him that he couldn't capitalise on it with today. But uh, you know, I take my hat off to JJ. He was a fantastic sub. Uh, he was cool and he was calm and he knew what he wanted to do and he did it. You know, we had a chat. I told him I thought he just had to get around to win it. Uh, so I don't know if he believed me. Or, for you. Yeah, I don't know if he believed me or not. But uh, thank God it was right. Um, and it did, he was travelling comfortable just like the two previous races all the way and sure it was really smooth. Tom, there have been some tough times here in the intervening period since Leon and Barney won. You've lost in the last couple of years, you've lost a couple of nice horses. Did that kind of make this an extra special win for you today? Uh, no, not really. Uh, no, I thought I'd better only say positive things here because they'd be always slagging me about whinging about this or that or how hard it is. Um, but no, look, we do it because we love it, to be honest with you. And uh, um, it's great to be able to make it pay, and then the bonus of getting some nice horses along the way is, is just fantastic. Yeah, days like today prove it can be done, though. Now we've seen Dermot McLaughlin win it twice, you've won it twice now. 100%. It's there. It's not easy taking on uh, Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Henry de Bromhead, Gavin Cromwell, no, but it can be done. No, it's not easy. No, it's not easy keeping up with Dermot. Uh, so, yeah, great. Little celebration tonight, or a big one, hopefully? Yeah, oh, look, actually, we just celebrate the little ones and the big ones, so um, for sure. And Tom, what about the future for this guy? Obviously, he'll celebrate this one, but he's only a six-year-old. Theoretically, his best day should be ahead. Yeah, he's only six, Gary. I honestly don't know. i sure it's new territory for us. I think Lionel Barney was nine when he won it. Uh, so, uh, you know, who knows? I honestly don't know. We'll just enjoy this for and another see what day. happens. Yeah, Marvelous exactly. stuff. Tom, thanks a lot. Well done. Thanks, Gary. JJ Slevin's with us, he's won his second Boyle Sports Irish Grand National on intense raffles. JJ, it's amazing the way these things work out. How thrilled are you to land this prize again? Yeah, sure, looking massive, massive race to win, Gary, and a uh, great performance from the horse. And uh, look, it's, sure, it's, it's unbelievable, really. Tough luck on Daryl Jacob, but somebody has to benefit in these circumstances. When did you find out you were going to have the ride today? Uh, last week. Um, so look, I was in uh, Newbury last week and I had a winner there for the lads, and she looked at the knee of someone. And, 
I wasn't tight on so thanks be to let me up on him. It's a great association you've got with Simon Minear and Isaac Sway. Do you think that maybe helped you in getting the nod? Yeah, hopefully. Like obviously I've been uh, dealing with the Crawfords for quite a number of years and they have horses with them and I've got to know the lads through Stuart really and uh, look at great people to work with and Anthony and Simon and Isaac and Charles and everyone does a great job so look at a, a privilege to work with them really. And a good run round, were you happy all the way? Yeah, I, I was I was very, I thought it didn't go quick, like I was very comfortable where I was and was three mile five in soft ground so it was just pot run away, hit the fort last, the right belt and I thought that might knock the stuff out and, and then down to the last he was starting to look around him a bit and he was normally stride there, he was long ahead but he's big and scopy and got out over anyway and stuck out, he stuck down his head and got up to the line. Only a six-year-old, could be a lot more to come potentially. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, but uh, yeah, it's obviously, but this is it's a big pot to win today now, we'll, we'll appreciate today first. Well done, well done. Time, time thank to you. get your trophy, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.